Hello class, in this video we'll be going through one variable linear inequalities. The learning intention of this video is for us to understand the meaning of the term inequality, for us to know how to interpret and represent linear inequalities on number line, and lastly, being able to solve linear inequalities. So let's start off by defining what is a linear inequality. So a linear inequality is a statement that contains two expressions that are not equal to one another. So I've got an example of a linear inequality down below. Notice over here, you've got um, an example of a um, inequality symbol, and there are four inequality symbols that you need to be able to understand. So this symbol over here just means less than, this symbol over here means less than or equal to, that's why it has this part over here. Um, this symbol over here, the third one is greater than, and this one is greater than or equal to. Now, what you also need to um, recognize is that there are two different types of linear inequalities. The first type is referred to as the one variable inequality. So one variable meaning one letter. So notice in this particular example over here, notice that you only have one particular letter in that particular inequality equation. Um, and when you actually graph out the solution of this, um, notice that this particular graph is plotted on a nice horizontal number, uh, number line. Now there's another type of linear inequality and that is referred to as a two variable. Two variable meaning therefore it contains two letters. So when you actually plot the solution for this particular um, linear inequality, this is actually plotted on a Cartesian plane and this will actually produce a straight line and we will learn about this type more in a later video. Now, what I want to explain are the two differences between a linear inequation versus a linear inequality. So the first one, which is pretty obvious, is that a linear inequality has a inequality symbol rather than an equal sign. So notice that these examples of yeah, linear equation contains equals, whereas a linear inequality contain, uh, will consist of a inequality symbol as shown over here. The second biggest difference between a linear inequation versus a linear inequality is that the solution, meaning the answer of a linear inequality, um, can contain multiple values. Whereas the solution or the answer of a linear equation can only take on one particular value. Let me show you an example so you have a better understanding what I mean by this. So let's use this example. If I was to double my age, I am 50. What is my original age? So if I was to construct a linear equation, that could be summarized as 2x equals to 50, where x is my current age. So if I was to find out what is my age, there's only one particular answer, and that answer is going to therefore be 25. Okay, so notice over in a linear equation, um, your variable, your unknown letter can only take upon one particular value. Let's have a look of what a linear inequality may look like. So a real life example showing linear inequalities is where you need to be of a certain height to go on certain rides. So the height requirement um, that you need to be is 130 centimeters or taller. So I could write that as X is greater than or equals to 130. So the possible values that makes sense or the uh, possible answers for this particular inequality is that I could be 130, 131, 132, and the numbers or the list just keeps going on. So that's what I mean by the solution of a linear inequality can take on a range of values or multiple values. The next thing that I want to go through now is interpreting inequalities. So as I was saying earlier on, solutions to a linear inequality can contain multiple values that when plugged in will satisfy the inequality and produce a true statement. So in this example below, it reads, list three solutions that holds true for the following linear inequality. So that reads, x is greater than three. So what are numbers are greater than three? So that could be four, five, six as my answer. Notice that you can't take three because three is actually including. And I could also put this onto a number line. So if I was to graph this on a number line, I could see that um, I could list down any numbers that are greater than three. Have a go of answering this question. It reads, if X is less than negative five, what are three possible values of X? 
So for this particular question, we just need to state three numbers that are smaller than negative five. So numbers that are smaller than negative five could be negative six, negative seven, and negative eight. And if I was to represent this on a number line, this is what it would look like. So as long as you choose any numbers from this side of the number line, you'll get the correct answer. One other thing that I'd like to show you guys is that sometimes the solutions for a particular linear quality may lie in between two particular values. So whenever you encounter these sorts of problems, when you're writing your um, linear inequality, you need to provide two values as opposed to one, and you also need to provide two inequality symbols. So let's use this example down below so you have a better understanding. It reads, the temperature is greater than negative four degrees, but it's less than, negative two, uh, less than positive 12. So what I'll do is I'm gonna dissect this into two sections. So let's write a inequality for it is greater than negative four. So I'm gonna write that as X is larger than negative four like so. And to write it that the temperature is less than 12 degrees, I can write that as X is less than 12. Now for these particular types of questions, the question actually wants you to write all of the information provided into one given expression or one particular inequality. I've got two inequalities that I've kind of uh, written separately. So let's write this as one the inequality. And the way that we do that is we always take this smaller inequality and we flip the entire equation. So whatever's on the left-hand side becomes on the right-hand side. And whatever inequality sign that was used, we actually flip the direction of that as well. So if we do that, it's going to become negative four is less than x. Why can we do that? Well, let's look at this example over here first. This is saying that the temperature is um, more greater than negative four, but that's the same thing as saying that um, negative four is less than x, because we know that x is larger than negative four. So these are two statements are true, but you can write them in different orders. And now that I've actually flipped everything, I can write everything as one single equation by kind of merging these two pieces of information together. So that's just saying that the temperature is in between negative four and in between 12. So therefore, solutions or temperatures that satisfies this particular example are negative three, negative two, negative one, and all temperatures stopping at 11 degrees Celsius. Have a go with answering these two questions over here. So for the very first question, we want to state three numbers that are between zero and seven, but including seven. So you could have any answer as long as you take any of these three numbers over here. Um, and for question B, because this is including negative 8.7, your possible answers could be any of these three over here. The next thing I want to go through is how do we properly represent the solutions of a one variable inequality on a number line? So to do this, we're going to be using circles and arrows to represent the solutions on a number line. But there are two important things that I need you to understand. Firstly, we use an open circle. So an open circle is essentially a circle that is not shaded when you encounter these two symbols. So the less than or greater than symbol. However, we use a closed circle or a shaded circle when you encounter these two symbols over here. So for these two questions, the questions on top, Notice that I'm using an open-ended circle, and for the questions down below, I'm going to be using a shaded circle, okay? So that's one thing that I want you to, uh, to take note from this slide. The second thing I want you guys to take note from this slide is, notice the direction um, that the inequality sign is pointing to, and notice that that particular arrowhead matches that um, the direction of the inequality sign. So it therefore goes left if the inequality sign is pointing to the left. And when the inequality sign is pointing to the right, notice that the arrowhead is also pointing to the right, okay? So that's another thing that I want you guys to pay attention to. Let's now have a go answering a couple of questions. So the first question wants us to match the graph with its inequality. Notice that for this particular graph over here, the circle that's used is non-shaded. And because it's non-shaded, therefore it's going to be using either the less than symbol 
or with a greater than symbol. So we could easily eliminate these two options over here because they contain the equal to um, inequality symbol as well. And notice over here, the solutions are values that are greater or larger than negative three. So therefore, I could easily tell that A is going to be my answer. Another way that I know that A is going to be my answer is that notice that this inequality sign, it points to the right and also the arrowhead also points to the right. So that's how I could tell A is going to be the correct answer for this particular question. For the next question, it wants you to also match the graph with its inequality. For this particular question, notice that we're using a shaded circle. So because we're using a shaded circle, I know that we're going to be using one of these following inequality symbols. So we could eliminate options A and B. And because these values are less than uh, five and also including five, I can therefore select option C as my answer. And again, notice that this arrow points to the left, this answer points to the left, so I know for sure that C is going to be the correct answer. Another thing that I want to show you guys is that we can also use two circles when the solutions of a particular inequality lies in between two particular values. So for these two examples down below, notice that you've got an inequality sign that is less than or equal to. So therefore, for the number negative one, I'm going to be using a shaded circle, whereas for the number three, because it's a less than, I'm going to be using an open circle, so like this. And similarly, for the example on the right-hand side, something very similar as well, where you're going to be using a shaded circle on the number zero, and you're going to be using an open circle or an empty circle on the number four. Have a go with answering these three questions over here where you have to match the linear inequality with its respective graph. So for the very first one where it says x is greater than 2, notice that you're using an open circle, so and it's also going to be numbers that's larger than 2, so a is going to be paired up with c. Um, for x is less than or equal to negative 2, it's going to be matched up with graph a, and so therefore the leftover is going to be c with graph b. The last thing that I want to go through in this video is how to solve and graph linear inequalities. So when we're solving linear inequalities, it, we're going to be using the exact same rules that we applied to solve linear inequations. However, there's going to be one fundamental difference, and that's going to be that the inequality sign will get reversed whenever we need to divide or multiply both sides of the equation by a negative number. So therefore, if you had a less than sign, that gets flipped to the greater than sign or vice versa. Or alternatively, if you had the greater than or equal to symbol, that will therefore get flipped to the less than or equal to and vice versa. So let's go through three examples in total and each of these three examples will be slightly different. So for the first question, 2x minus 5 is less than 7. So what I'll do first is I'll add 5 to both sides of the equation to undo the 5. So therefore, um, 7 plus 5 is going to be 12. So 2x is less than 12. And we will kick off the coefficient by dividing both sides by 2. Hence, x is going to be less than 6. And once you've got the final answer, we now need to graph this onto our number line. So because we've got the less than symbol, we're going to be using a empty or a non-shaded circle on the value 6. And because it's pointing to the left, or the numbers are smaller than 6, we're going to be moving in the left-hand side. So therefore, that's going to be our graph. Let's go through example 2, where example 2 is going to be completely different. So for this question of here, let's um, undo the positive 5. So we'll subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. So negative 16 minus 5 is going to be negative 21. We'll get rid of the negative 3 in front of x by dividing both sides by negative 3. Now remember what I've stated earlier. Whenever we need to multiply or divide both sides of the equation by a negative number, we need to flip the inequality sign. So because this is a less than sign, it's now going to be a greater than. So therefore, our answer is going to be x is greater than 7. And once we've obtained our final answer, okay, we will therefore plot um, 7 on our number line. And because it's a greater than symbol, we're going to be using the non-shaded circle and move to the right-hand side because it's larger 
than the value 7. So you're probably wondering why do we need to flip the inequality sign whenever we need to divide or multiply by a negative value? So I'm going to show you this example over here and hopefully this example makes sense to you guys. So the example reads 1 is greater than 0. Now 1 is a number that's larger than 0 so that over there is a true statement. Now let's see what happens when we multiply both sides of the equation by a negative value. Let's say that we had to uh, multiply by negative 1. If we multiply both sides by negative 1, this is what our answer will become. Now it reads from left to right, negative 1 is greater than 0. Now that doesn't make sense at all because we know that negative 1 is a smaller value than 0. So this is an invalid or a non-true statement. So the reason why we need to flip the inequality sign is so that the solutions therefore actually produces a true statement. So this is, I'll show you what I mean by this. So if we flipped the equation, sorry, if we flipped the inequality sign as I've done over here, negative 1 is less than 0. This, on the other hand, is a true statement, which is why um, the inequality sign needs to be flipped. This is slightly confusing, but it's just really important that you understand when we need to flip the inequality signs. And for our very last example, um, solve this particular equation. So what I'll do first is I'm going to move all the constants to the right hand side. So I'm going to undo the positive one by subtracting one on both sides of the equation. So if I do that, uh, negative two minus one is going to become negative three. I'm going to move all the letters to the left hand side. So I'll subtract both sides by negative seven X. This will therefore become negative three X is greater than negative three. And to get rid of the negative 3, I'll divide both sides by negative 3. Again, I just want to emphasize, when you're dividing both sides by negative 3, you need to flip the inequality sign. So the greater than sign now becomes a less than sign, and it becomes x is less than 1. Now, looking at our final answer, if we were to graph this, um, because we're going to be using the less than symbol, you're going to be using a non-shaded circle. And because it's pointing to the left, um, you need to therefore draw a line pointing to the left on the number line. And so therefore, this is how we would actually solve and graph linear inequalities. So please answer these questions over here from exercise 1e to get further practice. Hopefully this video has been helpful. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys again in the next video. Bye.